looks like a little bit more intimate group today as compared to in the past. It looks like maybe we have 10 people or so. Um, feel free to interrupt me if you would like, but I'm going to kind of start off with just sort of giving an update about our, our latest working vacation that wrapped up earlier this week. And um, like I said, if anybody has questions or wants to steer the conversation in a different direction, please, please do so. This is a very casual um, lunchtime thing. Sound okay? All right, so zooming in on Santa Cruz guard station here if my computer responds. This is a big file. So if you see this, it's actually a combination. I've, I've, a few years ago, the Forest Service changed their recreation maps and they, they chopped it off so that you can't see the whole, you can't even see the whole San Rafael wilderness. They, they broke it into two pieces. And so I took this, I think it was a 2005 version and sort of Photoshopped it together, but it's a pretty big file. It takes a bit to, to load up. So um, the Santa Cruz Trail is one of two national recreation trails and we did a, a fundraiser um, over the holidays to, to kind of try to raise some money to, to spend doing some trail work on both the Santa Cruz Trail and also the Gene Marshall Pieter Blanca Trail. And uh, we'll talk about Gene Marshall here in a little bit. But our, our first project, really, our first focus has been trying to get the Santa Cruz Trail reopened. Um, and we're really focused on, on the whole 20 miles from Upper Oso um, down here all the way up to Mission Pine Basin. And about 10 miles of that, and maybe a little more than that, 12 miles of it is outside the wilderness. And then the top, the northern eight miles, uh, you enter the San Rafael Wilderness. And so we've been chipping away. There's, um, there's been some other uh, trail activity. Sage has done a little bit of work and we've had some other independents doing some trail work on the lower part uh, between Upper Oso and Happy Hollow. Um, but I think LPFA is gonna sort of take the lead from, from Little Pine all the way up. Um, we just got back from 10 days. We were doing 10 days of trail work from, actually more than that, like 15 days uh, working from Santa Cruz Guard Station up towards Flores Flat. And um, some of you, I'm sure, I know Kendra and, and Rick were on the working vacation. But the trail's in really good shape right now, um, pretty much from, from Santa Cruz all the way up to Coche Camp or up to Kellogg, which is a little bit downstream from Coche. Um, and so that was great. It sounded like everybody had a good, a good time out there. We had freezing rain a few days. We had 95 degree heat a few days, um, but it, 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 we pulled it off. It worked out really well. Um, had a nice working vacation there. The working vacations are great because we have stock support. So we had some volunteers that, that brought in all the food and a lot of the tools and some, some cold beer for the end of the day. And uh, they were able to pack that in. And then we had our, our backcountry cook, Rich Scholl, um, sort of take care of all the cooking needs there at Flores. And it's, it's a real treat to you know wake up in the morning and have somebody else making the coffee and then having breakfast ready for you and, and a lunch that you can take with you. And then also at the end of the day, coming back and having uh, dinner and dessert, it's, it's, it's incredible. So if you, those of you who have not done working vacations, if you can break free for three to five days or, or more, we would love to have you on, on any of our upcoming working vacations. We don't always get rich shoal. Those are really special projects that we do. We try to do about three of them per year. Um, so keep your eyes out for the, the working vacations. Any other comments on Santa Cruz? Fun trip, lots of hard work. Is that Susie? Yeah, hi. Hi, Susie. Susie yeah, was I'm one of our- Gretchen. Oh, sorry. Hi, Gretchen. Hi, I was just gonna say, I can vouch for the working vacations too. We're in for the, we're in for the next one. They're great. Yeah, Susie, Susie's one of our, our volunteer packers. She has Sansi in Montana, the, the, the horses that were on the project. And uh, yeah, it's so cool seeing, seeing the horses coming up and down the trail. And they, they actually do a lot of trail work just, just by going up and down and, and you know, putting their hooves on the, on the ground as well. It helps a lot. But there's pretty good water in Santa Cruz right now. Uh, it's still hard to get there. You still have to go up and over the, 
the the slide that's on the south side of Little Pine is still a challenge. Um, the slide's right in this zone down here. I actually went and looked at it last week. And um, I think our next step for that slide is to bring in a st structural engineer um, who we have a friend of the LPFA who fits that bill. And so we're gonna try to get him to come in there and, and um, take a look at the slide. If you guys have seen the crib wall slides on the south side of Little Pine, it's they're pretty horrendous and scary looking at the moment. And um, my opinion is you have to kind of take them apart and then put them back together. But it looks pretty intimidating and a little scary to, to, to try to think about taking these things apart. And one of those things where maybe if you take it apart, you're going to make it worse than if you just left it the way it is. And so that's that's why we, we really want to bring in an engineer to take a look at it and, and either bless it and say, yeah, you, you can go in there and take it apart or say, Brian, you're crazy. Leave it the way it is and build build on top of it or whatever the solution might be. But it's a, it's a pretty challenging section of trail. Um, and then we're also going to be back out at Santa Cruz, hopefully in June, if the weather cooperates, and we'll be back at Santa Cruz Station working on the 40-mile wall, which is the section that, that kind of connects Little Pine with Santa Cruz Station. And I think the 40-mile wall is more like two miles long, but it feels like 40 miles. Um, but really, every every inch of, of tread needs to be hit in that on that 40-mile slope. So uh, we're hoping to get some volunteers out for for a weekend or a week, we'll, we'll see it, what people can, can commit to and just go up there in the morning, um, hack away at the trail as long as we can. If it starts to get too hot, then we'll, we'll head back down to Santa Cruz and spend the afternoon in the creek, but go up there as, as for as long as we can handle it and, uh, and start working on the tread. Uh, we even kind of talked about doing a, a, a kind of like two stages to the day, a double shift where you go out there in the morning while it's still a little cool and that part of Santa Cruz, you also can get kind of the marine layer that comes in in the morning. So maybe you work until 11 o'clock in the morning, go back down to, to Santa Cruz, relax in the creek, and then maybe come up in the afternoon again and work another couple hours if, if we could make that work. Uh, but it's a lot to do out there. And like I said, about every, really every inch of the tread needs to be touched with a tool. So it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a lot of work to reopen that trail. But our, our hope is that in the next year or so, we can have Susie ride her horse in on the trail. <laughs> rather than on the road because the yep, road is... that would be super good yeah that would be super <laughs> good um any other questions about santa cruz i can just keep rambling do you have an Brian, idea like... of dates uh, yeah, I think we have something on the calendar. Let me take a quick look. I think it was one of the middle weeks of June. Nothing has been finalized yet. Um, the dates that we have down tentatively are uh, June 12th to the 20th. Uh, but as you know, Susie, we, we can get into Santa Cruz. We can drive in there. So really, I think what we want to do is, is have intentions to be out there and then sort of see what the weather is going to do and respond to the weather as far okay. as scheduling the work out there, but uh, sometime, you know, mid mid to late June. Okay. Uh, we have the Haddock, you know, Pine Mountain working vacation coming up. That's that's going to take most of our brain power um, over, the, over the next month. And then we can start thinking about Santa Cruz again. And uh, Brian, I had a comment. I do like the idea of the two shifts a day. What, uh, what really zapped me the last couple days of doing the florist to Kellogg was just the sun it's really not the the physical labor it's the sun that that gets you the most yeah absolutely and, and the 40 mile wall is much worse than where you were there's no there's no shade out on that on that slope either um and so yeah it, like we'll, we'll see sometimes you get these nice little Cold, colder spells throughout the summer where you can get out there. It's, it's a high of 70 or 85 or some, you know, 80, 75 or 80. Um, that's totally doable out there. But yeah, if it's 95, I think you were the second week, Rick, when it was really hot the second weekend. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be on that 40 mile wall at, you know, after 10 o'clock in the morning on days like that. Um, but we can ship away. It's not that hard to get down to Santa Cruz. We, you know, we can, we can kind of have impromptu trail projects out there as well. Um, even when we go into fire restrictions, which should be coming up pretty soon, we can still cook at Santa Cruz cabin. 
Um, so, you know, it's, it's a nice place if the weather cooperates to, to host volunteer projects, you know, throughout the summer, um, as long as there's water, which, which, you know, it's probably going to dry up there this, this year as well. Um, so we, we have a couple more months of water out there and then we'll see this, this year is going to be a tough, a tough year for fall, finding fall water. Um, we also have a couple upcoming projects. I think Kendra, we're going to announce those here soon on social media. Um, but Mike Smith is going to be leading some, some trail projects out along Mission Pine. Let's see if I can shift my map here. Um, so many years ago, the Forest Service gave us a grant, some money to, to work on fires affected by the Zaka, sorry, trails affected by the Zaka fire. So we've been chipping away at those. And um, the grant expires at the end of this month. And so that's what helps to pay for all the food that we have on these working vacations and some of our other expenses. Um, let me see if I can get this to work here. So probably the worst part, the worst section of trail left in the San Rafael that's, that's somewhat regularly used is uh, Mission Pine right above Rattlesnake Canyon. And there's a, there's a two mile section. If you're going west of West Big Pine, we've been chipping away working at that section, but there's still this two mile chunk in the middle above Rattlesnake Canyon. It's, it's horrendous. And there's a few places there you're, you're, you're swimming through the brush and you don't know which direction the trail goes. You have to be looking for old cuts or, or you know anything that shows you you're on the right direction. So we're really hoping to take advantage of this last few weeks of this grant funding to go out there and and um and lead two weekends of trail work so mike smith's going to be going out there we actually have a pretty there's there's no water out there so it's a little bit of an interesting place to have a trail project it's also so far out there that you really can't get stock in it would take uh susie and her horses or her mules to you know a couple days just to get to where the staging area is so what we're going to hopefully do is we've enlisted the help of the Santa Barbara Trail Runners Group, and they're gonna go out on the weekend of the 15th, in theory, nothing's been finalized, and they're gonna run water from Windy Gap, which is on the Buckhorn Road, uh, three miles out to where our spike camp location will be. And they believe that they can each carry a two and a half gallon, one of those two and a half gallon containers of water. And um, they think it'll take them about, a, a, you know, an hour to get, they're going to mostly be walking, but, you know, quick hiking out to the spike camp location. So they'll quick hike out, drop their two gallon, two and a half gallons off. Then they're going to run back. They think the run back will take them under 30 minutes. And then we'll try to get as many trips out of them as we can. And over the course of the day, we're hoping that they can bring out 60 gallons of water, something like that, depending on, on how many runners they have. Um, we've tried some pretty crazy things over the years. Um, this might be the craziest as far as getting, getting stuff out to, a, you know, water out to a spike camp. But if we can get, you know, 60 gallons of water out there and then Mike will be bringing his goats in, um, the goats can bring in another 15 or 20. Uh, we should be able to spend eight days out there. The plan is to spend two four-day weekends, uh, the 14th through the 17th and then the 21st through the 24th of May and just keep chipping away at this central Rattlesnake Canyon part. And uh, it's gonna be a problem. We're gonna certainly be rooting for cooler weather. It's, it's pretty exposed out there. There's no water, you know, only the water that we can bring in. Um, we'll need some, some hardy people to go out there and help. But if you're, any of you are interested in volunteering for those projects, um, it is a beautiful place. You have nice ocean views um, from 6,000 feet up there on West Big Pine. It's some of the most spectacular country in the in the in the in the county and in the forest as well um, but keep an eye out for that we should be um, sharing that information here pretty soon brian those uh those runners i feel like they could have they could just pull a, a wagon from windy gap for like maybe two of those miles and then just walk the water from there the trail was pretty wide from windy gap for maybe two miles. I saw mountain bike tracks there like a month ago. Yeah, the pro problem with that is, you know, 
legally we're not supposed to have wagon you know it's, it's considered a mechanized tool um so according to the wilderness rules you know something like that isn't isn't possible um but i'm, I'm i know and i'm with you yeah the, the trail's in really really good shape for about two miles two and a half miles and then it starts to fade out there um we'll see this this whole hairbrand idea of getting runners to bring out water just sort of came came about yesterday and um <laughs> one, one of the runners is on it he's excited about it thinks everybody will have a good time um it's a, it's a great opportunity for the trail runners to see parts of the forest that they don't normally have the opportunity to get to. And um, I, I think it'll be fun. I think everybody will have a good time and, and hopefully they can get three trips each. You know, that, that's like 18 miles. That's a lot, but uh, they feel pretty confident they could do that. And uh, where roughly do you think Spike Camp is? Yeah, so there's, if you, if you know that trail, Rick, there's sort of a, a nice big rock on the right hand side that it has some little holes in it and stuff like that and kind of like a sandy little bench underneath the rock does that sound familiar no i did it like a month ago i remember there being like two low point saddles yeah the, the spike camp's not at a low point it's actually kind of at a higher point but um right next to that big rock there's kind of like a, an, a little oak forest and um there's there's a bunch of flat spots in the oak forest um, a lot of shade. And so that the, the theory is that we would be spiked at that little oak forest and the trail gets a lot worse just beyond that. That's kind of the edge of where the trail gets bad. And um, yeah, it's gonna be a challenge. It's it, really, I think this is this two mile section is the the worst part of the forest at the moment or the, or the San Rafael wilderness. And uh, if we could punch that out or a portion of it, um, that would be great. And the rest of the Mission Pine isn't isn't so bad. Once you get past Rattlesnake Canyon and you kind of start getting into the the Fall Canyon drainage, uh, the trail's in pretty good shape at the moment. And we, we worked that maybe four three four years ago, um, and all the way out to to Mission Pine Spring and then to um, McKinley. It's all in pretty good shape at the moment for sure. It's just that one little not so little two mile section there above Rattlesnake's a bit of a problem. That's Steve Cipher, I see. I don't see, but I see your name. Oh, impersonator. Steve impersonator. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I have to remember how to use Zoom. So yeah, it's my wife's account. How, how's it going? Good. Yeah, it's pretty sad about that Mission Pine Trail. I remember we had it cut out really nicely not too long ago but things grow back yeah i think it's always amazing how how fast time goes too and you you look back and you say oh we just worked on that trail you know i remember just being up there and then you start looking back at the photos and it's been four years it's like wow what, what happened where did those four years go and really really all of these chaparral trails they, they sort of need to be hit every every three to five years or they start to disappear again um It'd be really nice if we could get a schedule going, you know, moving forward or, or, or something like that, where we could hit all of these trails on some sort of a, a regular three to five year schedule. Um, that's kind of the goal. Hey, Brian, realistically, how wide would you want to um, cut the trail for both weeks of Mission Pine? Realistically, I think um, we'll probably have to lower our standards a little bit and, and try to make some distance rather than than doing it too too standard. You know, standards usually six to eight feet wide and and you know make it a, a boulevard. Um, but I think we, we have these just these two four day weekends to try to get it back into into shape. And so I think probably we should try to do something more along, you know, four to six feet in that range. Um, you could even do something where you kind of go through fast and then come through if time allows and, and kind of, you know, buff it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, another strategy is just focus on the really, really bad spots and, you know, understand that, that there's going to be some pushing through brush, but, but we're really going to open up the tunnels, the places that you have to crawl. Um, a lot of that's going to be just something that, that is decided by Mike Smith once you're out there. Um, I know he's he's planning on going out before the 15th 
and scouting it and doing doing a survey. And I think at that point, he'll come back with a better idea of, of how to approach it. Okay. Yeah. Anyhow, anything else from the Santa Barbara side of things, or should we transition towards Gene Marshall and talk talk a little bit about our our next working vacation? Uh, how about the tools we're allowed to use for Mission Pine? Is it same as Santa Cruz? Yeah, yeah. We we won't be. I don't think there's any reason to bring a crosscut saw in there, but I think we'll certainly have a be real heavy on the loppers. Uh, probably some trail smiths as well to help grub out some of the, the brush. Um, and then um, silky saws and, and maybe a katana boy would be would be okay as well. There's not a whole lot of trees there, mostly just brush. What's a katana boy? Katana boy is like a silky saw, like the silky big boy on steroids. It's, it's just a bigger version. I think, I, if I remember right, I think the katana is a 14-inch blade. And I think the silky is 8 Maybe it's the other, maybe it's 14 and the katana is 20. Um, do you know, Steve, you know the, the lengths of the, the blades? My katana is 500 millimeters, whatever that is. <laughs> okay. Or half a meter, right? So it's like a foot and a half. Foot and a half, yeah. Yeah, 20, 20 ish inches or so. And then there's a, a longer version than that besides I can't remember which ones you have if you have one of the longer ones or if yours are all 500s yeah the silk is about 14 inches yeah so the katana is just a bigger version of the of the silky big boy made by the same company they're pretty scary when you when you first unfold that thing it's like wow I have, I've got a I've got a sword here all right we're going to gene marshall i haven't practiced this but i'm gonna try to talk us through this whole thing this may take a while you know i'm gonna go to the tom harrison map for this one All right, so if you all have not hiked the Gene Marshall Trail, it is one of the most spectacular trails in the forest. Um, it, it gets a lot of fanfare. Um, you know, you kind of see a little bit of everything and you spend a lot of time in the big trees and, you know, up on Pine Mountain, it's, it's really nice. Um, and you get back towards the, the bear trap and the kind of the, the north side and, and you get into a lot of cedar, little cedar forests and the creeks are are really dense with with tall trees, and then you get into the chaparral, and there's usually good water out there. Um, it's it's a it's a great trail. It's one of our two national recreation trails. Um, a lot of people call it the Gene Marshall Trail. Some people call it the Peter Blanca Trail. Some people call it the Gene Marshall Peter Blanca Trail, which is its technical name. And it used to have this really nice. I, I liked it. Some people aren't big fans, but Camp Shydeck had a bar at the end, the Reyes Creek Bar and Grill, which um, it was always nice to, to have a burger at the end of the day. Um, it's been closed now for, I think, I think it uh, uh, didn't survive COVID, but hopefully somebody brings that, that little bar back. Steve, you should, uh, you should buy that, buy that restaurant as part of your retirement and uh, bring it back. Um, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I'd have to have somebody that parties way harder than me to run it. For me, <laughs> Uh, so anyway, there's been a, a big focus here between the Forest Service and, and LPFA to try to bring this, this trail back. It's, it's kind of hit, hit on some hard times. Um, there were some people that were, you know, casually chipping away at, at some of the, the trail here on the southern side um, as, you, as you head out from Pieter Blanca Trailhead. And there's always a lot of devoted volunteers who will go up there and, and cut out the down trees, um, generally cross-cut Crosscut Sawyers uh, like to volunteer a lot. So we, we usually can get people to go out there and clear the trees, but there's a lot of, of, of really bad brushing needed. In particular, above Twin Forks Camp, 
as you climb up towards Pine Mountain Lodge. And then probably the worst spot was between Bear Trap and, and Haddock on the northern side. And so uh, last year we, we, we got some grant funds from REI and we, we put some effort into working from Bear Trap up. And that was sort of the first section that we were focused on. We worked about a mile from Bear Trap up towards um, probably back up in here. And that was, like I said, really a overgrown and brushy section of, of, of trail. You get a lot of viney stuff back there and alders and cottonwoods that fall down. So that trail is in pretty good shape. Uh, then, uh, there was, let me rephrase, that mile of the trail. And then um, earlier this year, just last week, in fact, actually, it ended yesterday. Uh, the, the Forest Service hired a California Conservation Corps crew to come in. And they worked at um, from Peter Blanca, and they were able to pretty much clear the trail from the trailhead up to Twin Forks. So they spent two eight day hitches out there. And so this lower two and a half miles, almost three miles of trail is now a, a super highway from what it's been described to me. And so that chunk is, is now taken care of. And then we had a, a first Saturday, Ojai first Saturday volunteer project on last Saturday, the 1st of May. And they focused on, on kind of clearing out the trail from Reyes Creek up to Upper Reyes Camp, this three mile section. Um, it wasn't in horrible shape, but they focused on the brushy areas. They cleared out the trees. So this first three miles should be in really good shape now. Um, Craig Carey, who many of you should know, um, he's going out next weekend, the weekend of the 15th with a bunch of Boy Scouts and some other volunteers. And their focus is to open up the trail from Upper Reyes to Bear Trap, and then also take crosscut saws and sweep all the way up to Haddock with crosscut saws. So at the end of the, the weekend of the 15th, so that'd be the 16th, the, all the trees should be gone between Haddock and the Reyes Creek trailhead. And the trail should be in really good shape out to Bear Trap and one mile up. And so that, that's really nice if all that happens as planned. Then uh, we're using some, some more grant funds that we received to put the LPFA trail crew in, and they're going to spend a week, maybe two weeks, and try to finish the trail from the, the one mile mark above Bear Trap out to Haddock and make that all stock passable. So they have um, the week of the 17th through the 21st, and then also the 24th to 28th to try to get that all dialed in. So if all goes according to plan by the end of this month, the trail from, from Reyes Creek out to Haddock will be in perfect shape and ready for um, horses and mules to go along it. And then we come in with our working vacation, which, which will be here at Haddock Camp, um, starting on the 29th, Saturday the 29th. Hopefully all of you will be coming out for that working vacation. Um, but Susie and, and Otis um, and, and maybe another um, packer or two as well, uh, we'll be coming in from Reyes Creek and they'll be bringing supplies into Haddock. And then I, I assume most of the volunteers will be coming in from, from Reyes Peak, hiking out the Reyes Peak Trail and then down to Haddock. Uh, we will have Rich Scholl out, out there for the 10 days to, to prepare the food and handle the cooking responsibilities. And then the focus of the working vacation will be to work down to Pine Mountain Lodge and then also back up towards Haddock Peak. And um, if, you have, if you haven't been out there, this is a great place to work. We're, we sort of handpicked this spot for later in the season. Um, it's, it, you know, everything's around 6,000 feet up there. So it's going to be a little bit cooler. Uh, there's lots of pine trees, lots of shade opportunities. Um, the trail isn't horribly overgrown. It's not like, like Santa Cruz Trail last week where you have, you know, a mile of, of straight brush to, to do. There's kind of spots where you have uh, 20, 30 yards of brush and then it kind of opens up for a little while. There's also some tread work and, and some cross cut work out there as well. Um, should be really, a, really a fun place to be. A lot of wildlife, a lot of bears like to hang out in the Haddock area and, and by three miles as well. So should be a lot of fun. There's still a lot, a lot of pieces that need to fall into place. Like we said, um, you know, we got to get the trail stock passable. That's, that's the very first thing. Um, if the horses can't get in, we can't get our beer in there. So that's the, the most important thing. Get, get the beer into camp, get all the food into camp, get Rich Scholl into camp. And then, um, you know, if that all falls into place, then, then we should have a real fun and successful working vacation out there. Hi, uh, Brian. 
Hi, this is Allie. Um, I'm not sure if this me, um, this question applies here, uh, but since you're talking about the Pia Blanca trail, I was wondering um, what is going on with the situation with Pan, the homeless man that's been living at Woolet Hot Springs? Because I know a lot of backpackers like me and a lot of other people are concerned about that, about their safety. Yeah, uh, Pan. Yeah, we, we've been hearing about Pan for a while. I, I ran into Pan in January. Um, I didn't know him as Pan at the time, but the Forest Service is aware of him. And um, last I talked to them, which was about two weeks ago, they had plans to go in and get him out. Um, I don't know if that's happened yet or not, but he certainly has overextended his stay there. And, um, you know, you're, you're supposed to only stay in a campsite for 14 days. I think he's been there about eight months, um, you know, roughly eight months. And so uh, did, have you had any interactions with him? Did he um, ask you for food? No. no, I haven't been there, but I'm planning on going there for Memorial Weekend. Mm -hmm. But I know a lot of people have been giving him food, which is why he probably continues to stay. Yeah. Yeah, so he's, um, he's out at Willett. And he's been conveniently, so will it, if you guys haven't been there before, it's it's a hot spring, gets a lot of activity. Sorry, phone's ringing. And there's a lot of different campsites in there. There's there's one right down in here called Thatcher. Um, doesn't show up on all the maps. Um, some people camp up at the hot springs. Uh, most people are kind of camp on this bench here where there's some old old cabins and things. But he's set up right at the confluence of all the trails. So if you get down there into 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 Willet, the basin there at Willet, all the trails kind of funnel through one spot and that's where he set up his camp conveniently so he can ask for food. And um, yeah, he's been there for a while. The Forest Service sent somebody in, I think in February and they underestimated how long it would take to get out there. And by the time they got out towards Willet, they had to turn around and go back. So they never actually made contact with, with Pan. Um, but yeah, the understanding is that, that the Forest Service is aware of him and um, I believe I believe a mounted sheriff is going to go in and, and get him out of there, um, if if not already. But I'll I'll try to track that down because I know if you go on all trails and other spots, it's all over the place. People are are, are really annoyed by him. It's time that he move on, and um, I'll, I'll try to update you, Ali, if I hear any information. Send send us an email if you don't mind, and, and we'll try to get that for you. All right, thank you. Is the email um, can someone post it on the chat? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, so have you Brent, been to Willow before? Good spot. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I had a question back on Gene Marshall. What uh, What does it mean, uh, National Recreation Trail? Um, it's, it's a fe federal designation. I could read the the definition of it. I should should probably have that here ahead of time, but. It means it has a little bit more importance than, than the other nearby trails, either historic importance or scenic importance or some, something like that. Um, I, I don't know. Any, I've heard different stories about why and, and when it was designated as a National Recreation Trail. I think it, it coincided with when the CESPI was being formed. And I believe around that same time, Gene Marshall died and, and they might have just kind of tied it all together. I, I don't know. Does anybody, any, any of you know the whole story? I don't want to say the wrong thing okay well i'll try to dig that up but you can go on online i think it's um i mean if you do a google search for national recreation trail they have a definition of, of what the difference is yeah um, i just put it in the chat so okay. um if you can see the chat box there's a link um and i'll also pull up the one for the gene marshall does it have anything to do with horses and stock animals um, for Santa Cruz Trail and Gene Marshall that horses are more allowed because it's a national recreation trail and maybe horses aren't allowed on a normal trail? I don't think so. I don't think there's anything. I, I, I'm not looking at the chat right now. I don't think there's anything that's specific for, for equestrian use. Um, I think some, I mean, just... I know that on each side of Peter Blanca National Recreation Trail are corrals, so they make it a little bit more convenient for horses as compared to some of the other trailheads. But I don't know if there's anything specific in the definition of, an, of a National Recreation Trail that that's 
for uh, questions. I have a question on um, on the Gene Marshall, the working vacation, and I guess you're going to be sending this out. But um, where would we be parking? And are you? Is everybody planning on meeting there during the day on the 28th, or are there some people going out on the Saturday? Yeah. So gen generally, how we organize these working vacations, there's there's a lot of moving pieces and a lot of people coming and going. Um, what we like to do is just get a, a list of who's interested and start off with that. And we have a pretty good list at, at, at this point in time. And then we start asking how long they plan on, on being there. And then um, what we'll try to do for this one is probably have each, so I think most people are probably gonna come in from Reyes Peak. It's paved almost all the way up there to the, to the peak. And um, one second here, let me shut off my phone. And um, what we'll probably have is, is I would imagine every single day there'll be groups of people coming in and coming out. And we'll, we'll try to coordinate it so that when groups are coming in, maybe they meet at the trailhead together and hike in as a group. And same thing with, with hiking out. But I think with this project, since all the trailheads are easily accessed, I think we'll have a lot of people coming and going on their own. Um, and like I said, I, I, I would imagine that almost every single day there'll be somebody coming and going. Uh, we do like to have people commit to at least three days out there. Usually it takes about a day to get into a working vacation and then a day to get out. So we like to have a day in the middle where people can, can uh, you know, help out with the, with the trail work a full day. Um, and honestly, I, I think, you know, people will want to stay there more than three days. Generally, people don't want to leave. Um, they get into a nice rhythm of, of waking up and doing trail work. And if, if it's a hot day or you don't feel like you want to keep working, you know, you, you just tell the crew leader for the day, hey, I'm, I'm going to go back and read a book or sit in the creek or, or relax in my hammock. And that's fine as well. But um, we will, you know, once we get a list of everybody and start dialing in which days they plan on being there and, and which days they want to leave, uh, put a lot more information at that point about about the logistics. Um, okay. Kind of an interesting thing about this this haddock working vacation is there are a whole lot of different ways you can get in. And um, as I mentioned, I think I think the equestrians, the horses, are going to come in from Reyes Creek. Um, it's about eight and a half miles to get from there up to Haddock. Um, it's six miles from from Reyes Creek, so I think most of the hikers will probably come in this way. But you also could come from Peter Blanca or Cedar Creek. Uh, there's there's a lot of different ways that um, that people can access this one. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was just wondering if if people were going out on Friday, if if there's enough time to get off work just a little bit early and and hike in on Friday, Friday afternoon, evening. So, we'll we'll wait and hear from you. Yeah, and I think that'd be fine. You know, I I think we'll we we'll still have to finalize the the schedule with the Packers, but I I kind of think the Packers are coming in on Friday, and and so I imagine there'll be a group of people heading in Friday as well. To meet the Packers okay. and help them pack and get set up, but yeah, we still have. We're just at the, the the beginning stages of this this thing right now, where we just want to get a list of who's coming, um, and then try to okay. you know, move forward from there. Um, cool. Yeah, it's fun. I really love the logistics of putting together one of these working vacations. It's it's fun for me, but it's really um, nerve wracking at times as well. Um, <laughs> it's just a lot a lot going on. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll wait and hear from you. I'll We'll leave you alone. <laughs> yeah, who's this? I, I, you, I don't it's think it's Gretchen. Been... Sorry, it's Gretchen. Oh, hi, Gretchen. Yeah, Deb and I were just trying to work out logistics, so we'll wait and hear from you. We have to work Friday, so we were just trying to, I was trying to see if maybe we get up an hour or two early if there'd be time to hike in. And you said it's six miles from Reyes Peak to, to Haddock? Yep, yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it should be fun. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. This is, like I said, it's yeah. a beautiful section of trail up there. And whoever built the trail, you can kind of see these little squiggles on the map here. Yeah, uh, they did a really good job of just, just you know, keeping a consistent grade. And um, it might be a little annoying because you get into these these little side canyons, and you can see the trail way out there, and it, it just sort of like gradually goes into these side canyons and comes back around. And um, it, it, they, they're not taking the the path of least resistance they're they're really built a really nice trail in there and so i, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun 
walking to the work site in the morning and seeing all the work that's done and then at the end of the day walking back and and just kind of marveling at, at everything that we accomplish it should be a, a really satisf satisfying working vacation so brian what's it like at haddock is there um room for stock or are we going to do an in and out like we did at um floors yeah there, there's definitely room there there are some you know little meadows and things like that directly at the camp and then above and below as well um you know the amount of feed i, I try to send you guys a picture of what it looks like to, you know so you could evaluate how much feed is out there um i think you'll have to bring in some some food for the animals but i would hope you guys stay stay there um there's plenty of room to spread out there and, and maybe the animals take a, a meadow either above or below, maybe below the camp somewhere and you yes. highlight them and that's where they're at for the time. But I think there's enough room for, for you guys to stay and hang out with us. I hope so. Yeah, it's always fun to stay with the crew and then it would make it easier for the stock. We could come in and then go out, come in and go out, bring in and resupply. Yeah, and and you know what we talked about yesterday too is maybe a resupply is, is going up to Reyes Peak as well. Um, you know, you, right up there, we'll load you guys up at the top, and then you, you come on back down. It might be a little quicker for a day project, you know, day resupply. Okay. Um, but there's still a lot of work. There's there's sort of this infamous white thorn that grows along the Reyes Peak Trail um, right out in here below Haddock, and. I, I think we have to get that all cleared out before you guys can go up the trail to the Reyes. Um, okay. But we have two two people going out this weekend, one tomorrow and one on Saturday. Um, they're going to do a survey of the, the Reyes Peak Trail and, and um, we'll start trying to figure out how we can make that stock passable in case you want to resupply up here at Reyes Peak. And I don't think there's any room right there at the Reyes Peak Trailhead to put stock trailers to come in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Brian, I just want to make sure everybody's uh, questions get answered here. So Tara had a question in the chat, um, wanting to know on the North Fork Matillaha Trail from Maple Camp to Upper Matillaha Camp, has it been flagged or cairned? Yeah, good question. All right. We're gonna move over there slowly. So what was it from, from middle Matillaha to Maple? Is that what she said? Uh, North Fork Matillaha from Maple to Upper Matillaha. Okay. Yeah, so it's been a little while since I've been out there, but um, we did do some work on that trail. It's probably been two years now. This thing refreshes. Brian, okay. just to make sure, is that the one from uh, metal to upper? Because I was wondering too if, if that's been cleared. Because I know was, there's was a lot of bushwhacking. From which to which? Like the trail camps. The trail camps from like uh, the lower uh, Matilha camped up to the upper if there's been any trail work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, we can talk about that. So um, we have worked the trail uh, pretty much. There's about a mile and a half in the middle that's kind of uh, below upper Matilha and in that general area that we have not touched. Um, it should be flagged, but we haven't worked on any of that. Um, we're hoping to do that this summer. I know the, the lower part of the trail has been worked all the way to Matillaha and then maybe about a mile above that. And then we also work the trail from Maple down, but there's about a mile and a half in the middle that we haven't quite gotten to yet. Um, there's also a lot of work needed above Maple on the switchbacks as you, as you drop down from Ortega Hill that has not been worked either. And it's a little bit of a problem. Last time I was up there, it just was a little confusing where the trail should go. Um, but we are hoping to go out there again this, this summer. Um, we're also going to be doing some work at the trailhead and putting in some signs and a, you know, the Matilha wilderness sign um, that, that burned in the, in the Thomas fire. So we'd like to get in there and, and help make the trailhead look a little bit more like a trailhead. If you're walking down the road 
it's hard to even know where the trail starts. It's kind of a, I don't know, it's almost embarrassing. Just like you see a little path, path going through grass and that's the, the so we'll, we should be out soon trying to help that part of it too. Did that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it needs help. Mill Matilla on the North Fork, that all needs some help in there for sure. But it's coming. Help's coming. Hey, Brian, I had a question uh, back on June Marshall. Yep. Um, I haven't been there myself, but from reading the descriptions, it talked about rose thorn and stinging nettle, poison oak, and something else that's really spiky. Would you say that we need to almost dress differently? Like this type of work will be like the chaparral there is worse than the average place? Um, no, I think it's actually the other way around up there on top. Cause I don't think there is poison oak up there. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but you're at 6,000 feet. I, I don't know if poison oak grows that high in, in this, in this area. Um, I don't remember there being a whole lot of, of, of really nasty stuff up there on top. Now, like the lower part down by Peter Blanca, and then also in their trap, that gets pretty thorny and, and nasty in there. But I think the brush up around Haddock and, and between Haddock and Pine Mountain Lodge is, is not going to be that bad. I'm not, I'm, I wouldn't plan on having to wear armor or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, hiked. I, jinxed us. I probably just jinxed us, didn't I? <clears throat> I hiked the entire, the entire trail last uh, November. And there's a section between three mile and haddock where there is um it's like a section i think it's a bunch of sycamore trees and there's some poison oak growing but we stepped over it and we didn't have an issue with it um but that was really the only poison oak activity i saw along along that that area because like brian said it's pretty high elevation so and then we were wearing normal clothes and we got through it so i don't think you have to wear anything special just pants and long sleeves. Brian, this is Allie. I had um, one more question. Um, the road on uh, Sunset Valley Road um, that leads to the trailhead to the Manza Narrows, um, I know that's like a uh, dirt road. And I was wondering, is that even safe for like a sedan to drive around there? Yeah, um, so it's technically paved, but it sure doesn't seem like it. Um, there is one little section above, you know, kind of, it's more on the Happy Canyon side. One little non-paved section, but the rest of it's technically paved. There's just a lot of potholes. I think it's fine for a sedan. Um, you're just going to have to drive slow and, and make sure you avoid the potholes. Um, it's one of the worst... Okay trail I, I mean one of the worst roads in the forest right now is that that sunset valley road as you get down to towards naira but you can make it thank you okay yeah it's funny because probably in the southern los padres the two most popular trailheads are probably naira and peter blanca and i don't think it's any coincidence but the trail the roads to both of those trailheads are in horrible shape at the moment big potholes and um, it's almost harder to get there than, than along the trail in some spots. You know, back to um, middle Matillaha, um, should we even like make it to, Matil uh, to uh, middle Matillaha trail camp? Because you said it's only, you've only done trail camp for a mile and a half. I mean, do you think we would be able to like make it without bushwhacking or? Yeah, the, the trail, the trail to middle. So we've done, we've, the trail to Middle Matillaha, we worked on that a couple times. Um, that should be fine. It gets a lot of traffic. You get a lot of Boy Scouts out there. Um, I think there'll be, you know, some brushy areas or some spots where the grass has grown over the trail. And there, there's probably also some really dry or crumbly tread in spots as you, as, if, after you do like the upper creek crossing and, and the trail sort of switchbacks and climbs high, it might be a little narrow in there. But you shouldn't have any problems getting to Matilla, Middle Matillaha. It's above that 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 it starts to get more overgrown. Um, okay. I, I would guess that, 
you know, more than half the people, maybe 75% stop at middle Matilha. They don't go above there. It's kind of a good destination for people. And it's, it's above middle Matilha where the trail starts to get overgrown. And would you say there's a reliable water source up there at middle Matilha? Yes, always. Yeah, Matilha is famous for always having water. Always good water up there. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I was down uh, at Horn Canyon yesterday, down in here. I was looking at, there's a new trailhead there that bypasses Thatcher. It was pretty interesting. If anyone's hiked down there, lots of bear, bear poop all over the place. Down there, you know, right, right behind people's homes. Kind of interesting. Another place we'd love to work but we don't have any plans right now, would be Alder Creek in the Sespe, like Ant Camp, and all, you know, all that area here out of Doe Flat, between Doe Flat and, and the Sespe, really needs a lot of, of trail work. Maybe that's something we can look at for next year. And a lot of, a lot of people are doing um, Agua Blanca, you know, the, the new pothole trailhead has opened up here out of Piru, and we're seeing a lot of reports on Heiklos Padres about about uh, people going out there and, and finally hiking the Agua Blanca and the Pothole Trail. A lot of motorcycle trespass out there. Brian, I had a question about that, um, Alder Creek. Um, does the trail actually go around too shady or does it go up and over? Because I usually go up and over that ridge and then I drop down. Mm -hmm. Is that the correct trail? Yeah, are you talking about connecting where Shady is out towards uh, the Sespe? Getting to, yeah, getting to Sespe Hot Springs, basically. Right. Yeah, the the, the little trail of the Shady is just a it's just a little spur trail. Um, it doesn't connect through. Um, so yeah, the the official trail branches off before you get to Shady if you're headed towards Sespe Hot Springs. Okay. All right. I was just making sure because it's like stupid overgrown there. <laughs> It's crazy. I know, I know. That's that's a place that we we've, we've been wanting to work on. Um, cool. Yeah. Can't wait. It's manageable, but yeah, overgrown. Yeah, there's that, there's that big slide too. As you you know, once you get over that saddle, they call that saddle the Sespe saddle. And then um, as you're headed towards the hot springs, there's that big slide section that that freaks people out. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's pretty sketchy. Where it's all, like that loose, I don't know if it's like loose scree mm -hmm. where you have to bypass. Yeah, it's pretty narrow, probably like a foot wide. Um, I usually just walk really fast past that section. Yeah, yeah we hear, hear a lot of horror stories of people turning around. Um, one time I went through there and I saw these people that were way out in the middle of nowhere bushwhacking. And we, we ran into them later that day and, and they were too scared to go across that slide. So they just bushwhack down the canyon instead and um we actually left a we brought a pick out there I, I don't maybe this has been five years now and, and we left it there so that people could you know work work the trail if they needed to but last i heard no one can find the pick so maybe someone got frustrated and threw it off a cliff or something like that <laughs> that might have been it or maybe the rain maybe it washed it down into the into the canyon yeah now we've done that also on, on hurricane deck there's a really bad slide out by lost valley and, and we did the same thing and then we heard a, a story from somebody who got there they were on the wrong side of the slide they could see the pick on the other side of the slide so it didn't do them much good and they ended up scrambling across and um but you know you almost need two picks one on each side Ryan, I had a question on uh, the history of Mission Pine. Mm -hmm. For um, the Native Americans, what route did they bring the trees down from? Yeah, that's, I don't know if anyone really knows, but kind of the assumption is, I mean, the story behind Mission Pine is that, um, is that the, the Spanish, um, you know, enlisted the help of the Native Americans and had them um, carry 
these pine trees from Mission Pine all the way out to the Mission, Santa Barbara Mission. And, um, and then some of the, the, the wood that's still there, the Mission came from, originated from Mission Pine. Um, there's a lot of people that don't believe that's true, you know, that there are, uh, you know, closer sources of, of pine trees that they could have used. Anyway, um, I would imagine they, they did some sort of combination of going down Santa Cruz Creek. They probably didn't go up and over Little Pine. Maybe they just went all the way straight down Santa Cruz and, and around. Um, but that, I don't know, that, that might just be some sort of a made up story as well. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. It's a good story. Was the Kachuma Saddle Road, was that um, a trail back then? Could they have gone down that? Kachuma Saddle Road, like Happy Canyon area? Uh, like Kachuma Saddle and then going up to McKinley Peak. Oh, coming that way. Yeah, um, certainly could have come that way. You know, that I don't know if that would be the most direct route to get to Santa Barbara um, from Mission Pine. But um, yeah, no, that I'm sure I'm sure they were going up that way up along that ridge. Um, yeah, it's kind of, I mean, there's some really old maps that you could, you can kind of look at some of the old trails and things like that. Um, there have been a lot of trails dropping off the maps over the last decades. Um, a lot of that is just because of the Forest Service, um, you know, they, it's, it's easier for them to get rid of, of trails than try to keep them maintained. Um, that's, I think that's why a lot of the trails have been disappearing, but um yeah, you, I, th I think that some of the oldest maps are, you know, the early, early 1900s, late 1800s, they, they probably, they're, they're a little crude. It's, it's kind of hard to tell exactly where they are. They don't have all the drainages and, and topography correct, but it's kind of interesting trying to figure out where, where these old trails might have been. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, there, there's a guy that I've been talking to over the last couple years. He really wants to build a trail that goes from San Rafael Mountain down towards the alcove, the kind of happy hunting ground alcove area. He admitted he's gone out there a few different times and bushwhacked his way down. And it would make a really nice loop for sure, but I don't, I don't see the Forest Service taking on that trail anytime soon. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know why I just thought of that, but I was looking there. Anyway, our, uh, the LPFA trail crew, if you guys don't know, we have a, a higher trail crew that, that um, right now there are five of them and they um, go and do a lot of the work that, that uh, we get grants for and any kind of donation and fundraising, we try to, to keep the local guys doing the, doing the trail work. They're out working right now from Four Bush down towards the Mono Jungle um, on the Cold Spring Trail. Uh, actually, it was out there this morning with them. Um, and uh, they're they're chipping away. So that's a section of trail that hasn't been maintained in a long time, and um, it also hasn't burned. This is one of the, the the parts of the forest that hasn't burned. The kind of north the north side of the San Inez Mountains um, around Gibraltar, and uh, they said it's looking really nice. So that's that's a a place to put on your list if you haven't been out there. Is go check out the Cold Spring Trail and also Blue Canyon. We should be doing some work on Blue Canyon here soon too. As well well and next year we'll be working on Indian Creek Trail which is what we were supposed to do this year but uh, the forest closed the road for some road construction and so we'll be out there next year on Indian Creek which is a beautiful spot um, looking forward to that one for sure that'll be uh, challenging as well looks like we're down to six people <laughs> I looked away. There was like ten people now, dropping off like flies. Uh, where are Ryan, you? Rick? I, I'm trying to figure out where you're at. Are you in the San Ynez Valley somewhere? Oh, I'm on Highway Five now. I'm driving to Sacramento. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, I had a question about the Camino Cielo Trail. Um, Ken Ken mentioned guys have been working on it, and Mike uh, Gurley has been running the show there can you talk about everything you know about that trail and what the goal is yeah i certainly can so um there is an old trail i don't think it's on this map at all 
Um, this is an interesting little trail here. But basically, it connects the Ojai Valley Land Conservancy land there at the Ventura River Preserve, and it, it sort of follows this ridge line past White Ledge. I think there's a peak out there called Noon, maybe Noon Peak. Um, no, Noon Peak's over here, so that's on the other side. Heron Peak is in here somewhere. Uh, it's an old trail. I think it's called the Ocean View Trail. Um, and uh, before the Thomas Fire, a group of uh, dedicated volunteers decided to bring it back. And so they started chipping away at it. And then the Thomas Fire came through and kind of, you know, blew up all the work that they had done. And now they've been chipping away at, at it again. And it connects D Divide Peak um, with the Ojai Valley Land Conservancy land. I don't know how, how far it is. I'm just going to guess it's somewhere like 15 miles would be my, my guess, something like that. And um, I haven't been on it in a while. I've, I've been across it from Divide Peak for a few miles. Um, and I've been up from, from the Ojai side a few miles. I've never connected the dots. But uh, there's a you know, really dedicated group of people out there helping to, to bring that trail back. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if they had it reconnected here pretty soon. They're, they're very dedicated, some of the best volunteers out there. And, and Mike really mentioned there's no water on the trail. Will there be water when it's finally finished or there's springs somewhere along it that could make it a more practical trail? Yeah, I think there's one or two spring boxes out along the trail. Um, so the first, well, the first couple of miles as you leave, leave, leave the OVLC land is a single track. And then you get on the old East Camino Cielo Road. And then I think where that dead ends, there is an old spring box, but I don't know how active that spring is. Um, I think last I heard it wasn't flowing, but no, there's nowhere else for water out there. So I think, I think you have to haul in all the water that you need. But, and uh, uh, is yeah. he an organization or he's just a, a guy leading a group of guys? Yeah, Gorley, he's got, he's got a group in Ohio. I think they're called the get it done crew. And, um, I, I don't think he has any formal affiliation or relationship with the Forest Service or, or any agencies. I think they just uh, get it done. So go out there and, and get the work done. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to hike that someday, though. That's on my it's on my list. I think it'd be a really great uh, trail race or some sort of, a, you know, an event is, uh, you know, doing a run or something like that. From, from Santa Barbara to Ojai. It's gonna be kind of fun. I had a, I had a comment too on the, the Facebook uh, invites. <laughs> um, they're very practical before the event, but then after the event, I try and look to see how much they cleared or what distance or what camp to what camp, but the Facebook events disappear. Um, it would almost be better to the link on the LPFA website after the, the work is done. It's a description of what occurred so that it's there forever instead of the Facebook group disappearing. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. And, and we, try, we try to update information on high close potters. We're not always as diligent as we should. Um, and then I know, you know, Kendra and I have been, we talked about this this morning kind of getting ready to put out a recap of what was accomplished at the working vacation and, and you know, a, a publicity plan for sharing that information. Um, but you're right. Yeah, we, we, we certainly, I'm aware of that, need to do a better job of, of sharing all of our accomplishments. Um, and we are working on re, revamping High Close Padres. I know uh, some people may scoff because we've been saying that for a while now, but um, we got a, a, a nice donation that's going to be dedicated to High Close Padres and so um, we're, we've, we've talked talk to the uh, web designer here recently, and, and we have a plan that we're putting together for uh, doing some updates and some uh, new features and, and kind of cleaning the whole, the whole site up. It's, um, you know, kind of started as, as a very grassroots site, you know, over five years ago, and we haven't done anything with it since then. But it's, it's getting so much activity now that um, it's actually making a little bit of money for the first time. Not a whole lot, but, you know, tens of dollars. Um, which is better than nothing. And uh, so we're, we're going to start putting some more attention towards high school spot race, which will be great. And uh, can I mention one more comment on the Santa Cruz trip? 
Yeah. Um, I showed up there on a Friday near the end of it, and probably two miles had been cleared, and then there was another mile left that was tons of poison oak, multiple creek crossings, and um, I went on ahead, you know, to some new territory and started cutting there, and I got the second worst poison oak of my life this week, and um, some of the other guys that did the vacation said it's the worst poison oak they've they've gotten in a long time. Um, I think it would be great in the future to have the team lead the, you know, the leaders of the trip or the, the guys that are most immune to poison oak to work ahead for everyone else Mm -hmm. to clear that poison oak or at least the worst areas, just so that all the volunteers could then come, come after and do any, any random bushes. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's some, sometimes um, what we try to do is we try to figure out who gets poison oak and who doesn't and try to put those people who don't get poison oak um, on the poison oak. Um, I heard some horror stories about this last working vacation as well, is that the poison oak was hiding up in the sea of You'd cut the sea of and the poison oak would fall down on you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I apologize for that. But um yeah, certainly it's a, it's a question that we bring up a lot during our safety talk is who gets poison oak? Oh, you don't get it? You know, we're going to put you in the poison oak spots. Um, and it's not, it's no fun getting poison oak and it's not really worth it in the long run. Um, you know, I, we've all done that where we've been a hero and we just pushed through poison oak and, and cleared it. And um, sometimes you, you, you get away with it and you don't get poison oak. Other times it, it you know, you walk out with a a souvenir that you didn't want. And um, yeah, that's a, it's a good comment for sure. Yeah, and we're hoping, I know um, Kendra put together like a, a questionnaire, a post questionnaire. Maybe that, that could be even included in future times, something like that. Yeah, Rick, Rick uh, sorry about that. And uh, one thing that we're gonna do going forward as well is make sure that we bring like tech new um, and have that available for folks like as soon as they get back um, so that, you know, at least there's that first level of defense and kind of, we can kind of get some of the oils off before it, it seeps in. So it's okay, really, awesome. to yeah. Cause I'm someone also who's very susceptible and uh, I did not take one for the team. I avoided the poison oak as, as best I could, but um, yeah, we're going to, we're going to make sure that people are, are taken care of for sure. Okay, thank you. How are we doing? I think we're good. We're a little bit uh, past our, our one hour time slot. So um, wanna make sure everybody's uh, questions do get answered and know that we're gonna be holding this kind of casual check-in chat um, more regularly since it, it's a great way to get people's questions answered and uh, just let you all know what we're up to. Hey, so uh, this Steve, I probably missed it, but did you guys go over exactly how much of that Santa Cruz trail you cleared? Yeah, we did. We did cover that, but we can go over that again. Um, so we got the trail from Santa Cruz Station to uh, Kellogg, uh, pretty much to standard. Um, the last sounds like the last little bit might not be 100% to standard, but certainly good enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't remember a ton of poison oak out there, but yeah, I can definitely see where you're going in and out of where the creek is. And there was a ton of roses there when we worked on it before. Yeah. Yeah, Kendra says yes. Did did you ever visit that meadow that's up above Flores Flat Camp? Yeah, oh. so the, the meadow, we were kind of all spread out around Flores Flat, and the meadow was our, our main base, and it was beautiful. Oh, but there's a secret one that's above the cliff. Uh, where there's across the creek from Flores Flat, there's a cliff, and then up on top of the cliff, there's a, a little meadow I, with ancient oak trees up there that's really cool. I didn't make it up there, but I know uh, Rick did a lot of exploring, and uh, maybe he got up there. It was the whole place was so gorgeous. I highly recommend it for anyone who hasn't 
been out there, especially now that it's uh, so, so clear and beautiful. And we're going to be um, sharing, like, like Brian mentioned, we're going to be sharing photos and stuff. So hopefully that uh, incentivizes folks to, to get out there and explore because it was just so fabulous right now before everything turns brown. There were tons of wildflowers. Um, we saw a lot of snakes of all kinds, which was awesome. And yeah, it was great to have the creek there as well. Um, what do we do in terms of rattlesnake uh, antidote for future trips? I know we saw at least two on the three days I was there. What's the plan if someone gets bit? Uh, yeah, that's, that's like one of my big spot. one of our biggest fears. Um, honestly, the plan is to call with our sat phone and get a helicopter in there as quick as possible. Yes. Okay. But always yeah. try not to get bit first. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's one nice thing generally with, with trail work. I mean, you, you can startle them, but generally you move slow enough. You're making enough noise. Um, you know, over the course of a week, I got to knock on wood. You, you know, you, you're not going to see as many. I, I, I don't know. I tend to see them more when I'm just hiking than, than actually doing trail work. But um, yeah, you'd think that over the course of a week with 10 people doing trail work, we'd see a lot more than just a couple. So I like, I like to think that we make enough noise that they stay away. I'm knocking on wood again. And uh, for next year, what can we expect in terms of scheduling? Do, will there be stuff from maybe November through through June every other weekend? Or, or when is the working season really and how often? Yeah, uh, another great question. So, you know, Los Padres, we sort of have two, two main seasons. We have a fall season that, you know, really is October through December, you know, when it starts to rain, it, it, you know, you get that little window. Sometimes we can do some things in, in the summer months, September, but usually it's October through, through early December. Uh, then it usually rains a whole bunch and the backcountry kind of shuts down uh, December through February. And then we kind of pick up trail work again um, in, in March, April, May, and, and sometimes into June. Uh, but really anything in June is kind of a bonus um we can get a little lucky there are some 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 areas that we can do trail work throughout the summer um sometimes up near big pine uh, upper Sisquoc, and and those areas you can get lucky and, and be able to do a project in the summertime months um but really it's like fall we try to, as far as big working vacations we try to do them one in the fall and then two in this in the spring if we can pull off that schedule that's that's really a, a good year for us okay. um you know, I, I, I just sent your email address, Rick, to Mike Smith. Mike puts together a lot of, of you know, quick strike weekend projects. Um, and he'll kind of watch the weather. If it's a cool weekend, he'll try to get in there and, and, and do some work even the summer months on the upper Sisquoc. Um, and so you should be on his list from, from here on out. Okay, great. I don't think you got to work with Mike, but um, he, does mo he leads most of the backcountry volunteer projects uh, in Santa Barbara County. Um, but yeah, that's, it's pretty much, you know, we have the fall and the, and the spring and then in, anything else is kind of a bonus. And then how often is it pretty much every other weekend for all of this combined? Um, yeah, that's, that sounds a little bit too optimistic, but, um, I'd say like if we did one, one project a month, a, you know, like a bigger volunteer project, that would, that would be good. Um, our trail crews out every week, we have them out just about every week. Um, they're doing something so um we keep those guys busy um but you know they're getting paid we, we can put them out in spots where the volunteers might not want to want to be um so yeah we're i mean we're out I, that's you know it's interesting we're, we're out in the forest at least once a week doing something um if you're really interested rick what you might want to do is, is go through the volunteer wilderness ranger training and then you sort of you know get trained on how to lead your own volunteer projects and so they might not be big volunteer projects that are open to the public. Maybe it's just you and a couple buddies. Um, you go out there and clear some trees or do some recon or, or you know, if there's a particular trail you, you want to, you know, adopt, then, you, you know, you, you, you can go out there and work on it as, as you see fit. Um, but something like that, you know, it sounds like you're pretty dedicated and interested in this. That might be a, a, a good route for you to. Yeah, to sure. On. Yeah, shoot me a little email on that link or name of it. Where, where are you? Where do you live, Rick? Where's your home? Where's your head? I live. 
I live in Goleta and grew up in Goleta. Okay, in Goleta. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, we haven't we haven't done a volunteer wilderness ranger training in in I think it's four years now. Um, we had the debris flow. We had a government shutdown um, with COVID. I mean, it seems like every year there's something that happens. So we probably shouldn't schedule it ever again um, <laughs> because bad things seem to follow that volunteer wilderness training. But we, we usually do it. The the um, it's, it's usually the weekend be, between the before the Super Bowl. That's kind of historically when we've done the training end of January. Um, okay. And we looked into into doing a training, a virtual training. We looked into doing a series of YouTube videos that could do the training, um, but uh, so much of it too is just getting out there and, and being together and, and meeting, you know, the, the legends of the Los Padres and, and having time to, to, to kind of, you know, rub, just bounce ideas off of people and, and it's, it's just, yeah, I, I think we decided it's probably best to do it in person. And I did reach out to Search and Rescue too, trying to do their training program. They said after COVID. Yeah, I, that's that would be great. And Susie, who was on the call, I don't think she's there anymore. Maybe she's the iPhone that I see. Maybe not. Susie's part of Santa Barbara Search and Rescue. Um, if if did you meet her on the project? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. She she knows her stuff. Yep. Anyway, um, I think we should wrap it up, Kendra. Yeah, thanks everybody for being here uh, and um, hope to see you all out on the trails soon. Bye everyone. Thanks Kendra, thanks Thank Brian. You. Steve, we'll talk soon. Thank you guys. Bye Susie, thank you. All right, bye now.